morning, everybody. Or should I say good afternoon or good evening? Because I heard that there are uh, some participants from all over the world uh, attending us. Uh, so I'm pleased to welcome you to our uh, trilateral workshop on electrochemical carbon di dioxide utilization hosted by RWE. My name is Shovan Oseni and uh, I'm the moderator guiding you um, through the program today. So today's workshop is about um, giving you some insight of the, to the electrochemical CO2 utilization, especially from three European projects. And um, these are Lotecom, eco to fuel and Ocean, which will be later on uh, described in, uh, in more depth. In the morning session, we will be going slow, we will be giving you some introduction into CO2 utilization and why CO2 utilization is um, needed. And um, then we are going to give you an introduction on electrochemical CO2 utilization and uh, a sneak peek of the project. Um, but first, um, I would like to um, give the floor to some, um, to some people from industry and from the European Commission. And um, with that, I would like to give the floor to Dr. Lars uh, Kulik, the CTO of RVE Power. Also on behalf of my colleagues from research and development at RWE, I would like to welcome you to today's expert conference. It is due to the pandemic and the still far too high numbers that this workshop is taking place via video chat. We would have preferred to invite you to a real meeting at the RWE Innovation Center. However, the now familiar video conferencing technology still makes intensive exchange and dialogue possible. I am delighted that so many have accepted our invitation and are now online with us. Ladies and gentlemen, you are on the right track. Your topics are the topics of the day. Your tasks and the solutions you are working on are needed to answer central questions for the future of our European industrial societies. Like all of us, you would not have needed the war in Ukraine to see yourself so vindicated and acknowledged. Politicians all over Europe, however, are widely talking about a turning point in these weeks, a political, military, economic, technology turning point. The Western world is responding with a reassessment. On the one hand, with regard to the defense capability and the equipment of the military. On the other hand, in terms of economic relations with Russia. We painfully feel that in Europe and in Germany in particular, there's a high level of dependence on Russia, especially in terms of energy supply. There's no question that this war will fundamentally change the energy market. Therefore, it is why to become independent and sustainable in energy supply as soon as possible. Security of supply and climate protection are closely linked, closer than ever before. What does this mean for the energy industry in concrete terms? In answering this, a distinction must be made between the short term and the medium to the long term. In the short term, urgent measures are needed to improve supply security in the coming winter and in the following years. Structurally, that means in the medium and long term, we in Europe must diversify our sources of supply for energy and raw materials. Without substantial contributions from all sectors of the economy, we will neither be able to reduce our dependency nor achieve the climate goals. 
This is not just about getting supplies of natural gas, coal, and uranium from other countries. It is about more. We need to replace fossil war materials for the chemical industry and fossil fuels for mobility. CO2 mitigation through carbon capture and utilization and a cross-sectoral circular economy for carbon are crucial in transforming supply systems. Ladies and gentlemen, you are working on promising technologies for the electrochemical synthesis of fuels and chemical feedstocks from water, renewable electricity, and captured CO2. They bypass high synthesis temperatures and pressures. Moreover, these technologies are not so dependent on a hydrogen infrastructure. CO2 sources will continue to exist even after the end of coal use. At the same time, we will continue to need carbon as a chemical building block for the production of everyday goods. If we couple the utilization of CO2 and renewable power generation, we will have close carbon cycle for climate neutral chemicals and fuels. This in turn means more security of supply, greater stability in the power grid and further significant reductions in emissions. 22 partners from industry, research institutions and universities in nine countries are coming together today. What unites you is a joint work on the three European Union funded projects, LOTA, eco to fuel and ocean. None of us could have imagined the challenges we all face today. The huge task of achieving climate neutrality has been joined by the structural break in energy and raw material supply. It is all the more important now to pull together in our yields and to tackle the tasks together. This can be done through professional exchange and good cooperation, as can be seen in today's workshop. Wherever we at RWE are needed with our energy, our knowledge and our experience, we support this professional interaction and exchange of ideas. I sincerely wish you all the best and every success for not only this workshop, but also for the future work. I am 100% sure with the experience and knowledge assembled here today, we can find solutions for the import questions concerning our future. Now, I wish you all the best for the workshop and fruitful discussions. Thank you, Mr. Gulick. Uh, so this was Mr. Gulick, um, CTO of RW Power. And uh, now I would like to give the word to Dr. Soren Bowart, second deputy head of unit at European Health and Digital Executive Agency, Hadea. Thank you very much, uh, Swan. Good morning, uh, dear participants. Um, I'm really, really pleased to welcome you to this uh, workshop on behalf of the Commission Services. It's a really important event, uh, and because it integrates a lot of activities from three uh, Commission-funded projects on CCU, that means carbon capture and utilization, which I think you all know. Uh, so why is this important? In reality, I think we all know many of the details, but the integration of them is a little bit more difficult when you're looking at the news which we see every day. We have a big climate problem, partly induced by CO2 emissions, and to counter this, the Commission has launched the European Green Deal, <clears throat> which aims, amongst others, to cut the emissions uh, of CO2 by 55% uh, in 2030 and 80% in 2050. These are huge targets, 
that demands really, really striking measures and big actions from our side. It means we have to cut back on, uh, on fossil fuel, uh, but at the same time, we are really dependent on uh, these fossil fuels for the industry as carbon sources. And we see clearly now, especially with the war going on between uh, on, uh, of Russia against Ukraine, that we are, we are really, really dependent on these resources. And we need to do something to be able to cut these dependencies. With the fossil fuels, we need to uh, produce more alternative and sustainable energy like wind and solar uh, or of, uh, of wind and solar origin which have the problem with the fluctuation. I think we all know that we see when we drive through the landscape that some of the windmills are standing still and the sun is not shining all the time. But we forget what this means. And therefore, we need a lot of energy storage to counter this. We can produce the energy today and also in the future with the accelerating energy sources. But we need to have this energy storage. And CO2 provides not only a carbon source, but it also provides this energy stores, uh, storage that is needed and at the scale which we need it. It means that CO2 upcycling, they, need to, they lead to many different uh, chemicals that can be used throughout chemical production. But many different alternatives are actually needed. We don't need just one, we need many different things. At the same time, we need to, to develop the base technologies on which these things, these transformations uh, are based. And chief amongst those material-based things like uh, catalysis and, uh, for instance, membranes. When the colleagues and I started the first commission workshop on CCU in 2015, we could not possibly imagine um, what, how important this was going to be. We knew that it had a, a big uh, uh, impact on the, on the industry. But since then, we have, sh we have just seen how important it is. And we've slowly gathered momentum with different kinds of calls related to CCU and start of the associated projects, chief amongst those the three projects that uh, are going to be presented today. They form the fundament on which we will have to stand for the future. It's therefore really important to realize the responsibility that uh, these projects have for the implementation. So I put great faith into the, uh, uh, into the results that are coming from these projects uh, for the future also. And with that, I wish you all the best for the workshop and for you as participants, and would like to give the floor to Lucia and Yolanda, who will present the more technical aspects of, uh, of this presentation. Thank you very much. Thank you, sir. And uh, as Zoran uh, already said, uh, we have uh, at next on the line, um, Dr. Lucia Fernandez uh, Macia and uh, Yolanda Alvarez Gallego, uh, who are going to be talking about the uh, two projects, uh, Ocean, uh, which uh, Dr. Lucia Fernandez is uh, the EU officer of, and a bit of fuel, uh, which uh, Yolanda Alvarez is the of, uh, EU officer. Thank you. Um, um, am I already uh, visible? Yeah, thank you. <laughs> thank you very much. Um, well, uh, good morning, uh, everybody, and thank you for uh, uh, to the organizers for inviting us um, today. Uh, we would like to give a short summary of CO2 conversion in Horizon 2020 and Horizon Europe. Um, are the slides visible now on the screen? Um, in that case, um, could we move to the next slide, please? Thank you. Uh, so, <clears throat> achieving uh, the, the climate neutral goals uh, set in the European 
uh, Green Deal requires reducing the greenhouse gas emissions by directly acting on the emitting processes, but also by recycling and reuse of uh, emissions. The circular carbon economy will play a major role in the transition to more resilient and sustainable energy and industry uh, systems. In addition, the conversion of captured CO2 into added value chemicals, fuels and materials, and materials sorry, is a powerful example of this uh, shift of paradigm to circular models. Next slide, please. Uh, so we know that uh, carbon capture and utilization is an important technology for reducing emissions that can be applied uh, across different sectors in industry and energy uh, production. Uh, CCU uh, is an important part of Horizon 2020 and it was addressed over the different work programs. Uh, in particular, CO2 conversion uh, was uh, addressed uh, with regards to the process itself in relation to the materials that enable such conversion or in relation to the energy applications and so forth. Uh, CO2 conversion is present in cluster 4 in relation to industry and cluster 5 in relation to energy. Next slide, please. And in uh, Horizon 2020, in the work program 16-17, uh, CO2 uh, conversion was present in three um, calls. The call Industry 2020 in the Circular Economy included a part dedicated to the SPIRE partnership. The SPIRE public-private partnership brought together eight process industry sectors using uh, large amounts of energy and resources. The partnership aimed at systemic innovations of industrial processes with a cross-sectorial approach. All this to improve the energy and resource efficiency and the competitiveness of European industry and to minimize waste and greenhouse gas emissions. Within this uh, uh, part, uh, there, was, uh, the, there are three uh, topics uh, related to CO2 conversion, one coordination and support action, and two research and innovation actions, one related to the electrochemical conversion, within which two out of three projects funded were related to the electro reduction of CO2. Next slide, please. The call Nanotechnologies, Advanced Materials, Biotechnology and Production included a section on advanced materials for energy applications, which focus on the sustainable and secure supply of energy that remains affordable. There is a research and innovation action on cost-effective materials for power to chemicals. The call competitive low carbon energy focus on techno-economic feasibility and cost and resource effective new solutions for storage, capture and use. It also included a research and innovation action on the utilization of, cap of captured CO2 as feedstock for the process industry. Next slide, please. And uh, in 2018-2020, also three calls uh, cover the CO2 conversion subject. Uh, the call Secure, Clean and Efficient Energy included a section of four related to the near zero CO2 emissions from power plants and carbon intensive industries. Important parts were the conversion of captured CO2 into useful products that would create new markets and also the integration of flexible fuel power generation and storage including power to x to power and in this uh, section there were of interest two topics one csa on the strategic planning for ccu as development and a research and innovation action on the conversion of captured co2 next slide please the call industrial sustainability included a part on catalyzing the circular economy that sought for uh, breakthroughs in CO2 conversion via sustainable chemistry and smart materials. There is a research and innovation action on photocatalytic photo synthesis 
uh, from CO2 used as building block to produce added value chemicals, materials and fuels. The coal competitive low carbon and circular industries focus on the design and demonstration of sustainable circular value chains and also on improving cooperation between sectors via industrial symbiosis and across value chains. Of interest is an innovation and research action uh, on low carbon industrial production using CCCUS within which CO2 conversion was also funded. Next slide, please. Um, following the launch of the European Green Deal in 2020, the European Green Deal call was published to respond to the climate crisis and help protect Europe's ecosystem and biodiversity by turning green challenges into innovation opportunities that would allow us to accelerate a just and sustainable transition to a climate neutral Europe by 2050. There are eight areas of action and in particular area, the area on industry for a clean and circular economy supports the switch to alternative and sustainable energy and feedstock sources and the adoption of more circular product designs. It's, it also expected to contribute to increasing our autonomy in raw materials. With more than 50 euro million of funds the topic closing the industrial carbon cycle to combat climate change aimed to prove the feasibility uh, of uh, uh, in an operational uh, environment, industrial environment of the catalytic conversion of CO2 as, as a sustainable alternative to fossil resources. Next slide, please. And under Horizon Europe, CO2 conversion is present in Cluster 4 and Cluster 5. In Cluster 4, the destination climate neutral, circular and digitized production um, aims to set a credible pathway to contribute to the twin green and digital transition of industry. Actions in relation to energy intensive industries are, for example, the development of sustainable ways for circular utilization of waste streams and CO2 CO streams. Um, topics within this destination are related to three co-programmed co partnerships within which is Processes for Planet, the successor of SPIRE under Horizon Europe. In relation to this partnership is the topic valorization of CO CO2 streams into added value products of market interest. It's, a, it's an innovation action with deadline uh, closing today, by the way. And um, next slide, please. In cluster five, the destination sustainable, secure and competitive energy supply addresses new solutions for smart grids and energy systems that are based on more performant renewable energy solutions, including carbon capture use and storage within which is conversion of CO2 into valuable products, of course. RNI outcomes of this destination will focus mainly on accelerating rollout of infrastructure for CCUS hubs and clusters, a general reduced cost of the CCUS value chain, and also on proving the feasibility of integrating capture, storage and use in industrial facilities. Of interest are uh, a CSA on the integration of CCUS in hubs and clusters and an innovation action on decarbonizing industry with CCCUS, targeting high terrains of seven and eight. As you can see, CO2 conversion remains a very important subject for the research and innovation programs of the European Commission. And with that, I want to thank you all for your attention. Thank, thank you, Lucia. Um, so, these were the statements that we uh, were expecting today in the morning. Thanks again to everybody um, for, for uh, your appearance, uh, your statements and your support um, of these projects um, within uh, the, um, uh, the, the programs. So, um, at next, I would like to present you um, 
um, or to give you a little introduction into electrochemical um, CO2 utilization and uh, why CO2 utilization is actually that important. For that, I have prepared the presentation and uh, I would like uh, that the presentation starts. I unfortunately cannot see uh, whether the presentation starts or not, uh, but I assume it's on page, uh, page one right now. And um, normally you should see a globe and this is where I want to, th to start. So as you know, all, there's only one planet Earth, but um, by 2050, we will be consuming as if there were three. And this type of overconsumption has left its trace on the biggest, and uh, one of the biggest is climate change. It's happening all around us, and it has an impact uh, on all aspects of the human life. Slide two. Climate change affects all regions around the world. Polar ice shields are melting and the sea is rising. Extreme weather events are occurring. Rainfalls are becoming more common in some regions, while others experiencing more extreme heat waves, uh, extreme heat waves and droughts. And these impacts are expected to intensify in the coming decades. Therefore, we must act now. And how can we do this? In fact, this is a simple question to answer. And um, if you haven't been li uh, living behind the moon for the last decades, also you know the answer to this. Slide three. So we got to reduce our carbon footprint, meaning emitting less carbon dioxide and thus using less fossil fuels. Well, easier said than done, right? The global energy and chemical industry rely heavily on fossil fuels and thus does our lives. Slide four. In 2029, around 84% uh, of the global primary energy came from fossil fuels and 92% of the commercial organic chemical compounds were sourced from crude oil. There is not only a dependency from the energetic perspective, though, uh, which we might solve through a mixture of different technologies, but also a strong dependency from the molecular perspective meaning that we are in need of carbon-based materials in our lives that cannot be replaced by alternatives such as hydrogen. Additionally, there are some processes that inevitably release CO2 and which are very important, such as the cement, lime, glass production, or even complete sectors, such as the agricultural waste or wastewater sector. So, Looking at all these points, it becomes clear that in the near future, and um, I'm not going to put a point uh, or a number on this day, slide five, but in the near future, we will be relying on using carbon-based materials, whether for the energy, transport, or chemical sector. And we need to find an alternative to fossil fuels, as not only are fossil fuels finite, but we also cannot continue like we have been doing in the past decades to allow the coming generation to enjoy a world that is worthwhile to live in. Slide six. So this is a call for efficient and timely defossilization of our society with carbon neutral fuels and chemicals independent of carbon from fossil sources. Slide seven. Having said this, carbon dioxide by itself, the same molecule that causes the climate warming story has the potential of being one of the solution to fight climate change and to pave the way for the energy transition. Slide eight. And because defossilization cannot only be achieved with electrification or with hydrogen or by simple abstinence of carbon-based fuels and chemicals while being affordable and practical for everybody to participate to and contribute to the energy transition, Slide nine, new technologies are needed urgently to allow the decoupling of our carbon needs from fossil fuels and going from a linear make use dump economy to a circular economy in which we use the widely available CO2 whether emitted through an unavoidable CO2 point source such as the cement production or through direct air capture and turn it into carbon neutral fuels 
all chemicals to allow a smooth transition to zero carbon technologies and climate neutrality in 2050. Slide 10. And this is where the CO2, electrochemical CO2 utilization comes into play. With the electrochemical CO2 utilization, you pursue the conversion of CO2, this electricity from renewable sources into carbon neutral fuels and chemicals. Uh, why the focus on electrochemical convert, uh, converting, um, you may ask, because, you, uh, because converting CO2 electrochemically is highly practical and has many advantages. For starters, it's operating at mild, at even ambient conditions and therefore safe and easy to implement. With electrochemical CO2 conversion, the CO2 can be converted directly without the need of other chemicals such as hydrogen. And additionally, it can be designed modular and can be implemented easily into any process and can, be to, uh, and can turn in, um, CO2 into a broad range of molecules. Slide 11. Therefore, the in, uh, in the project Lottercom, Fuel and Oceans are focusing on electrochemical utilization of CO2. Slide 12. And since we are focusing on the core technologies and we are wrapped up with figuring out how to make pro the processes more efficient, green, and increase its technological readiness level, paving the way for the technology to contribute to and accelerate the energy transition, slide 13, we are relying on a partner that is willing and has the ability to support us in pushing this technology towards real-world application at a meaningful industrial level and who preferably can also deliver the needed CO2 in various grades for our technology continuously. Slide 14. And with that, I would like to give the word to, Professor, uh, to Dr. Peter Moser from RWE, who is supporting our projects by giving them a home to be tested. And believe me, the erection of such early stage technologies is not easy, neither from a regulatory nor technological point of view. Thus, a huge thanks to RWE for supporting these projects and assuring additionally that the needed CO2 for our project is delivered in, continuous, in a continuous manner so that our technologies can be operated 24 seven, which is important for the analysis and future development. Dr. Peter Moser. Yeah, thank you, Schwan, for this very kind introduction. Um, and hello and, and welcome to, to you, ladies and gentlemen, for um, joining this trilateral workshop on uh, electrochemical CO2 utilization. Yes, it's a pity that we cannot meet, uh, meet each other uh, at the site of the demonstration due to the COVID-19 pandemic. However, um, we have prepared uh, some video sequences so that you have a, a chance to gain some impressions of the setup at the site and uh, yeah, additionally also on our demonstration approach of the full process chain um, yeah, of electrochemical CO2 utilization. The demonstration um, comprises uh, CO2 capture, the CO2 compression and liquefaction, and uh, yeah, the conversion um, by the electrochemical systems of CO2 into valuable fuels and chemical compounds. So today in the Lotus CO2M uh, demonstrator, in the ocean demonstrator, and in the near future uh, in the eco to fuel uh, unit. So I would like to, uh, to start the, the video, please. Yeah. The, the site of the demonstration um, is RWE's uh, Innovation Center at Niederhausen in Germany. Um, yeah, the demonstration of innovative technologies in an industrial environment is a decisive step um, to advance the technologies from the status of research and to industrial application. And it's of um, <coughs> utmost importance to um, test the technologies and evaluate the technologies under the sometimes harsh, um, yeah, not ideal, but, but real conditions. And uh, for example, the, the technologies must work under all weather conditions in winter time and in summer time. So that, that makes it so important to have this full chain testing. Um, 
the infrastructure at the Innovation Center allows it to, and, uh, to test uh, the technologies 24-7, 365 days per year. Here a view uh, of the control room. The fully continuous shift system is based on operators of RWE's uh, R&D team. Um, they control the operation of the units, they take care that the uh, supply of the utilities works as, as intended, they um, realize together with the partners the testing programs, they regularly inspect the units, and they also take, uh, take samples. Um, yeah, and from this continuous long-time testing, uh, we learn quite a lot, so especially the operating behaviors, and we uh, come to important figures like lifetime of components or um, the effort for the maintenance of the systems. The CO2 is captured uh, from the flue gas of a 1,000 megawatt power plant unit and by an amine-based post-combustion capture plant. The unit was um, um, yeah, commissioned in 2009 and will achieve 100,000 operating hours in this year. The capture capacity of the pilot plant is 7.2 tons per year and uh, at a capture rate of, of 90%. The CO2 is uh, compressed and liquefied and stored in a 18 ton tank uh, that you can see here. For this, the captured CO2 is transported via this pipe bridge to the um, compression and liquefaction unit uh, and the CO2 has food quality. Uh, we can supply the uh, utilization demonstrators with gaseous uh, CO2 or with, uh, with liquefied CO2. And directly opposite of the compression and liquefaction unit is the, uh, are the loader um, CO2M units and the ocean demonstrator. The loader CO2M um, unit was uh, erected in, in December uh, last year. And uh, yeah, the erection and the, then later the commissioning was supported from our maintenance and technician teams uh, from R&D. Um, after the positioning of the demonstrator via heavy cram, the uh, integration work started, so the connections to the, to the control room and to the utility supply were installed. So the phases of erection, um, commissioning and operation follow a, a clear step-by-step -step process so that we can ensure that, um, yeah, all, uh, that, that we have a, a safe and, and legitimated operation. So that means that the preparatory work for this started long ago at the beginning of the project where we had uh, review uh, design meetings and uh, then later also so the um, hazardous and operability studies to always be safe that we fulfill industrial standards when we operate the units. The ocean demonstrator was installed in January 2002 and the erection process followed um, yeah, almost the same procedure as for the Lotus CO2M unit. Um, also here we took care uh, regarding the implementation of um, yeah, control of emissions, noise, um, water pollution, um, fire protection, explosive uh, um, protection, or the, um, the pressure vessel directive, and more. And uh, yeah, the, both units were also um, inspected by notified bodies. And I will also take the opportunity to thank the uh, permit authorities in Cologne and Bergheim um, for their support of the work and, and the good cooperation. Yeah, after the um, finalization of all documents and the manuals and the training of our shifts, the real testing program um, started yeah, and this is now for me the point to hand over back to um, Schwan. Uh, he is the coordinator of um, the Lotus CO2M uh, project and the eco 2 fuel project. And he will um, explain you more now in, in more depth. Uh, we'll give it, he will give you an overview about the projects. Thank you, Peter. This was P uh, Dr. Peter Moser, uh, the head of emission reduction technology R&D at RWE Power. So thanks again, Peter. Um, the time 
and the effort that RWE is putting in these is just uh, beyond my expectations. So I believe my presentation is on. I would like to give you now a little bit uh, more into detail what uh, the projects are. And I told you already about the electrochemical neutralization of CO2 and have mentioned our projects, uh, LOTA, CO2, um, CO2M, uh, Echo to Fuel and Ocean, slide two. So let me dive a little bit deeper into these projects and tell you a little bit about electrochemical CO2 utilization, how it works, what challenges we are generally, um, or everybody who has been dealing with uh, CO2, electrochemical CO2 utilization in the last 60 years has been facing, and tell you how, we have, um, how far we have come. So I will keep it light as I know that today in the morning, there will be a large number of non-scientists with us who are generally interested in this topic. Also, since I have the honor to coordinate the LOTACOM and uh, the Echo to Fuel, I will be uh, talking specially about these two projects while my colleagues, uh, Professor Siglinda, um, um, will be telling you about the ocean project later on. So, slide three. Let's get to it. Electrochemical CO2 uh, utilization. Um, what we generally mean by that is that we convert CO2 in a single step in an electrochemical membrane reactor. Um, here's a black box uh, to keep it simple for now. With water and green electricity or uh, green electrons from sun and wind, for instance, uh, we turn CO2 into carbon neutral fuels and chemicals. So this looks easy, but uh, let's crack up the black box um, and see what's waiting uh, for us here. Slide four. So the electrochemical membrane reactor is, as the name says, a container which, uh, in which the reaction, the conversion of CO2 with the help of green electrons and water is being performed. Slide five. It houses two electrodes, first of all, um, to be connected to the electrical source, whether PV or wind. Slide six. These two electrodes are separated by an ion conductive membrane that, is, uh, that assures the conduction of the ions, prevents the products from the reaction, um, reactions at the electrodes from mixing, and prevents a short circuit. Um, slide seven. For the CO2 to react, uh, we need to lower its activation energy since CO2 is a very stable molecule and chemically in a very satisfied state. This is done by a catalyst, which is being applied either, um, either on the electrodes on both sides um, uh, or on the membrane on both sides. Slide eight. Once everything is ready, one can assemble the electrodes and the membrane to a membrane electrode assembly, meaning sandwiching the membrane between the two catalyst layers and the electrodes. By putting this membrane electrode assembly into a reactor and feeding carbon dioxide, at the cathode and water at the anode a compartment, we can uh, we engineered an electrochemical membrane reactor that, depending on the choice of the materials, um, the composition, the cell assembly strategies, and the applied operation conditions, we can produce a broad range of carbon neutral fuels and chemicals. And now that everything is ready, we can run it, right? Um, well. That's true, but there are some variables we need uh, to watch. Slide nine. For instance, the cell configuration, the material choices, um, and the operation conditions, just uh, to name a few. Uh, this is, by the way, a single cell. Um, but let me highlight what I mean by giving you some examples on the cell configuration and material choices. Slide 10. Here we have three different cell configurations. Uh, slide 11. So instead of sandwiching the membrane between the two electrodes and the catalyst layer, we can create a so uh, called H cell, in which we have a bare naked copper electrode that functions as a catalyst inside the U formed tube, along which we can now bubble CO2 and apply a potential. The second configuration is to use a gas permeable electrode, apply the catalyst on one side of it flow the CO2 at the other side where the catalyst is applied and the water at the, uh, at the other side. So uh, we call this a flow, flow through cell. The third configuration is now our cell, which I will describe before, is a membrane electrode assembly, a so-called zero gap cell. Now let's have a look on the, uh, how they differ in terms of the product they produce. 
slide 12. The H cell produce um, in a high ferroidic efficiency um, loads of methane, ethylene, and ethanol. So there is another way to um, actually produce your own moonshine. Um, slide 13. And the flow through cell now equipped with a copper catalyst powder, a single cell installment um, looks, by the way, like this um, in the lab, slide 14. And this is how, um, what it produces. It produces no alcohols, but instead more carbon monoxide, also a very valuable chemical, uh, slide 15. And finally, the zero gap cell. Um, this is how it looks in the lab. And uh, on slide 16, you can see what it produces, actually. It produces uh, less carbon monoxide and no methane. Slide 17. And if this has not um, caused you any thoughts like, hmm, that's interesting, uh, let's have a look on the material choices. Slide 18. So my colleague Simon went ahead and produced a bunch of different copper powders. Um, by the naked eye, uh, you can see um, no difference, but under the microscope, you can see the difference, which is uh, on the bars, above, uh, above the bars. Um, so with uh, some fascinating shapes, but the composition, meaning the material, is always the same. So he applied these in the cell as a catalyst and looked at the product of the cell. And look, isn't that um, fascinating? I mean, with different shapes of copper particles, uh, the product of the CO2 conversion varies uh, tremendously. And this pattern you can find with any of the aforementioned points, which is one of the main reasons why this technology has not made it in the last 60 years out of the labs um, into the real world. Slide 19. Anyhow, so um, in 2017, uh, we took a leap of faith and uh, came together with pioneering minds all over Europe to develop just in three years a system, not just a single cell, which you just saw uh, in, um, in, the, in the slides before, but the whole system that can convert CO2 um, in just a single cell without the need for hydrogen, with renewable and electricity, into carbon neutral methanol, and we coined this one um, Lotacom. Uh, that stands for critical raw material free, low temperature electrochemical reduction of CO2 to methanol. Slide 20. So, with nine partners, we proposed a new um, catalyst design, composition, the use of various membrane materials, and operation conditions, and uh, promised to raise the technology level or technology readiness level um, of the electrochemical CO2 conversion uh, technology from three to five, or um, in other terms, uh, from lab to the real world. Slide 21. So um, we had to go far. Uh, and uh, we had to go to some serious uh, scaling uh, processes here um, for the uh, from the first cell uh, to the system and um, here the final cell um, and we faced many obstacles such as um, our pro proposed strategies were not all were only little effective to produce methanol um, but uh, we were successful in converting um, the CO2 with an efficiency over 70% to other carbonaceous products um, of which we can, um, which we will be hearing later on uh, from uh, our colleagues. And uh, driven by our ambition to have this technology to be operated out of the lab, we designed the system to allow the production of carbon neutral, uh, carbonaceous uh, products that are separated in the system and ready uh, for further use. Slide 22. But enough spoken, uh, so let's have a look on the Lotocom uh, 5 kilowatt demonstrator that is now operated at the RWE in Niederhausen. And normally a clip should play now. 
right so you can see here the the, the container is delivered at RWE. Which is uh, which gave me the first time goosebumps because um, seeing the little cell um, from the lab coming that far into this industrial area to be operated that's uh, that's quite amazing. And as I said, the installation of uh, such uh, demonstrators, early stage technologies is regulatory wise, um, not very easy, especially if you are such a uh, big company as RWE, you have to be, um, you are under, under control all the time and uh, you have to be uh, adhering to all the regulatory guidelines um, and um, I heard it from uh, the colleagues of RWE what uh, what work and what effort uh, was behind that to get them um, allowed to be operated. So this is the installation side. And now we are standing inside the container, actually. Um, and operating the system. Diana from Vito is operating here the system and analyzing it. So let's have a look inside the system, how it looks. So the stack on the top right side, part of the picture is the heart of the system, actually. This is where, where all the magic is happening, where the CO2 is converting to carbonaceous fuel, carbonaceous fuels and chemicals. Some impression for the less technical among us. <clears throat> and again, this is the cell, this is the cell, actually it's the cell stack. Uh, I described to you before the, how the cell looks, the zero gap cell, and this is the stack. You can see now uh, the picture of it. These are controlling valves for the cathode and for the anode side. And this is the sample taking from the cathode side. So that means that contains all the uh, carbonaceous fuels which we produced, and it's now going to the analysis. These are the suppliers, CO2 supplies and water and waste water containers. So with that you have now uh, you have now had a look on the 
um, on the system, how it looks. And um, so slide 23, motivated by the results uh, of the single cell and our cells in the test rig in the lab <clears throat> and the Green Deal initiatives uh, of the European Union, um, we took then the next step to invite even more pioneering minds into our consortium um, to push this technology even further. So it's, uh, it's now 15 international partners um, and the financial support of the European Union under the Green Deal. We set out to create um, the large scale, low temperature electrochemical CO2 conversion uh, to sustainable liquid fuels. Uh, which is uh, coined now Echo to Fuel project, slide 24. In the Echo to Fuel project, we intend uh, to increase once more the technology readiness level from five to seven. Um, that translates in, um, in English, in plain English, to system prototype demonstration in operational environment. And um, so we set the goal to build a worldwide first megawatt um, CO2 electrolyzer direct CO2 electrolyzer, meaning that we are going to intend to scale up the Lotochrom system, which you just saw, by 200 times. Um, and, and to build the direct CO2 electrolyzer to convert CO2 in a single step without the need of hydrogen for hydrogen, um, under mild conditions, without any critical raw materials. This is very important. Any any no critical raw materials also used in Lotocom, but we are intending to not use any critical raw materials also here um, and convert the CO2 in C1 to C4 alcohols. Slide 25. With the Echo to Fuel project, we also will cover the full value chain, which we assured through the smart selection of the consortium partners and will evaluate the produced carbon neutral fuels as green alternative feedstock in two of Europe's CO2 um, emission heavy sectors, transport and energy. Slide 26. And with that, I would like to come to an end and uh, hope that, I, that you enjoyed the sneak peek into the project Lotocon and Echo to Fuel. And um, I hope that I got you excited uh, to either stay tuned or tune in later to listen to um, the colleagues going into details of the two projects. Slide 21. Now, um, I would like to give um, the floor uh, to Professor Ziglinda uh, Parathona, who is unfortunately not there today, um, but uh, her colleague, um, Gabrielle Senti, is going to um, give her presentation. Gabrielle, the floor is yours. Hello. Uh, good morning to all, and uh, let me first uh, 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 apologize that uh, Unfortunately, we have some technical problem and uh, the computer broken down and uh, so I'm just connected by uh, uh, mobile. So quality maybe that is not uh, ideal. And also let me apologize that uh, Professor Peratoner also for uh, he is not able to, to, to speak. And uh, 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 so I, I will substitute her. So Professor Peratoner is the coordinator of uh, the SEM project, and both we are from the University of Messina. Hello? You heard me? Hello? You heard me? I hear you. Hello? 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 Hello?
<clears throat> so, uh, Gabriel, are you are you um, are you hearing us? Um, These are strange times <laughs> with all these online meetings. I apologize for the for the technical difficulties. Um, uh, it seems that um, Gabriel um, he um, cannot connect anymore, and um, so um, maybe we will have some time to to give, uh, or maybe he will have some time to give uh, later on his uh, presentation. But um, on the agenda is right now a break, uh, which uh, I would like. Uh, to 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 take now so um and we will be back at 12 30 with the lotacom sessions there will be also afterwards at uh, two o'clock the ocean session at, at um, three uh, three thirty the echo to fuel sessions uh, under which uh, you will always have uh, two presentations and a q uh, q and a session where you can post your questions within the chat um, and we are going to try our best to respond to your questions. If we cannot respond to your questions within the time of the workshop, uh, we will make sure if you leave us your contact details, we will, will make sure that we answer uh, your questions directly to you via email. So with that, I would like to thank you uh, to participating to the uh, morning session of the uh, electrochemical CO2 utilization workshop. And... Um, I look forward uh, to uh, welcome you again in the afternoon session. Uh, thanks again, and um, hopefully see you soon. Bye bye.